This is like my own little warp core. Engage. Well, you've seen us working on this little, ooh, reverb. You've seen us working on this bay last time. They're fitting this out, and this is our utility bay. This is where we're gonna put our electrical system on this side, and our water tanks and plumbing on this side. Today, we're gonna put in our batteries and all our, uh, you know, the inverters, the charge controllers, hook that up to the solar panels up top, and Bob's your uncle will be out of here before you know it. We decided to do things a little bit differently. We have got a 45-foot bus, so much to do on this bus. I'm not an electrician. I've seen some really, really great systems. They've got the batteries all set up. They've got the cables from the batteries to the inverter to the charge and from the charge controllers and, and there's so many really nice pieces of equipment sort of screwed in and, and all wired together and beautiful runs of wire. It looks like art. It looks really hard too. We're doing it a bit differently. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> This is not a uh, sponsored video by any stretch of the imagination. This is a Bluetti AC300 with two B300s, and there is another AC300 and another two B300s. This is our electrical system. I'm gonna go into great detail about what it is and how much power we have and how it compares to uh, a more traditional component system. But today, we just gotta get it off the truck and into the bus. Let's do that. Okay. I'm excited. I'm excited too. I love you. I love you. While we get prepared for this, I want to show you a couple of other things. Mostly storage in this one. I've got an idea for drawers, slide outs, all kinds of funky stuff. This is where the toolbox is going to go eventually as my little workshop. Also on slide outs. I'm very ambitious, aren't I? <laughs> this is just a fuel tank. Ignore this. This is where the gnomes are going to live. <laughs> and this is where the garbage can used to be for the original bus. I'm thinking spare parts or uh, something like that. That's a spare tire compartment. I know people have done things with their spare tire compartments and uh, just turned it into other storage. But let me tell you, I know why we need a spare tire. <laughs> spare tire. In this compartment, spare containers of oil or windshield washer fluid because that is where the windshield washer uh, reservoir is. Probably safety equipment, things we'll need right off the bus if we happen to pull over. That's also where our uh, our diesel heater is going to be. Second fuel tank. Hotel California. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. We got this idea from Mella and Don, so thank you. So the cat's litter boxes will not be in the bus. They will have their own area with a ramp that goes down. It'll also be walled off and heated, which we're very excited about. Our cats are going to be living in luxury. I know. <laughs> Probably better than we will. What's going on in here? This is just going to be storage. We don't know exactly yet. Yeah, we may not even fit this out. This might just be uh, dirty stuff. storage. Yeah. Right now we're just doing the most important pieces. We're replacing all the floors and putting in walls. So we're going to do that in this bay and then in Hotel California to get ready for our first trip. Yeah, we might be able to just take them in and slide them all the way out. The carpet there. will probably make it easy to slide in. Let's try it. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm excited. <laughs> ready? We'll swing it around. I'll push. You push. What do you think? Oh, oh, yep. Oh, that door's gonna... Don't I know it. Okay. You wanna come around the other side and... Oh, you're, you're coming in too, okay. You ready? One, two, three. Uh, Hi, Blue <laughs> We love you. So this one, the cords are gonna go this way. Yeah. yeah and the other one, the cords are gonna go that way. way. So that's why we wanna put this set as close to that as yeah. we can. There was no point in me vacuuming. That's not true. Because, see, it's like plowing snow in the middle of a snowstorm. Yeah. You don't wait till the snowstorm ends. That's true. I just want it to be pretty. Oh, that one's light, huh? Doesn't have the batteries inside. Okay. Ready? Yep. There we go. Nice. Look at that. That looks very sweet. Take a picture for me. That leaves a lot of space right here. Plenty of room for cables right there. Whoa. Water break after this. Yeah, I'm it's not the heat, it's the heat again. Oh, that's so pretty. That's right in. That's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good job, us. All right, now we gotta hook it up. When you're hooking up regular standalone batteries, all of the, the component systems use these big, thick cables with lugs and bus bars. We don't need to do that. This is all we need. Come watch. This is so comfortable. Right? I love this. It's like you're in a little room. <laughs> These are proprietary connectors from Bluetti. They, let me get in here. I still have them. Lock it in, and this connects to, I'm gonna do it to the bottom battery. Now this is the B300, it has the same connector down here. Wait for the click, and then lock it. We are going to do the same thing right here. Now there is capacity here for uh, two more batteries connected to the AC300, and that's what these are for. Everything's all connected. I gotta press the button. Okay. You wanna press the button? Yeah. 
press the button. Oh my god. Oh, the green light came on. Oh, the green light came on. So these are already fully charged? Yeah, 97%. Okay. We've been keeping them charged up at our house for a bit, yeah. and uh, but now the solar panels are going to keep them charged. Yeah, we're going to be hooking those up a little bit later too. It's very exciting. So now I'm going to do this one. So honey, basically what you're saying is each tower is connected in series, and the two towers are connected in parallel? Uh, or is that no, not how two, it works? No, the two, the two towers are going to be completely separate from each other. Okay. We're not going to connect these together at all. They're two separate things. We could connect them together if we needed 240 volts. Okay. Right now, we're not going to do that because we don't have anything that requires 240. Because our washing machine is only 120, so we don't need any 240. This is so cool. This is so exciting. <laughs> Like we were excited to get our windows in because that was the first time that we were really adding something to the bus instead of demoing or cutting things apart or you know doing a rephrase that kind of stuff. But this is a different level of excitement because we're now self-sufficient with our with our electricity, and we I don't know it's just it's so exciting to think about. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Batteries have come on first, and that powers the uh, the head the head unit and 99 percent. And look how nice this is, hun. The cords go right to the edge, and That's just so y'all know, we are gonna put more wall here. We're just kind of trying to get the, the most essential parts up so that we can get the batteries in. But yeah, this placement is really nice. And what's nice about this setup is that you can reach the batteries from driver's side or passenger side. So do you want to tell them how we're going to keep them from rocking and rolling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is when we were driving here, we had one tower already and we had that uh, upstairs in the bus. Now I had a um, two pieces of cardboard that were about yay long and had little corners on. So I just put them here. So they took up all three and then put a ratchet strap around it, hooked it to the frame of the bus and held them in. And it did a really good job. We're going to do something very similar here. I'm going to do some pieces of wood. I'm going to line it with something soft. We're going to put it along the corners here and then we're going to run a ratchet strap from here right around to the other side and maybe mm. another one down here because yeah. we're not using these. Yeah, these hooks, the, these holes down here we don't use and they're very strongly attached. So that will hold it, keep it from falling over. They are very heavy but they're still... They, would, they would rock and roll for sure. We'll do the same thing with the water tanks over here. Everything will be firmly held in. Yeah. That's, that's our plan. Cool. But isn't this the prettiest thing you've ever oh seen? Oh my god. Isn't this so beautiful? Gorgeous. I just turned on the AC power so I can plug something in and use it. Let's do that, shall we? Awesome. We discovered that uh, right here, these little bolts are having some problems with the... Yeah, I'll show you. When we close this bay door, they cause all this damage right here. And those bolts aren't good for anything. This is the first time we've had anything plugged into our power system on the boat. I mean, we've used these before for other things. Yeah, when we were traveling from Portland to Tulsa. Yeah, we... I used them for fans because... Oh, yeah. But we didn't have solar power at the time, so about halfway to uh, uh, Tulsa, it died. And we had no way to charge them. Oh, uh, what a trip. <laughs> All right. That was the first use of our power from our power system. And it was an angle grinder, which pulls a lot of juice. I could hook the welder up to these things. <laughs> Good job, Blue Eddie. <laughs> That's so cool. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a water break. You've already seen us installing our solar panels. We have our super array and our mini arrays. Mini arrays are two panels in series. And then the super arrays are four panels, two in series each in parallel. And we have two of those. So eight total. Yeah, so eight, eight panels in total and two. So these wires right here, this is uh, solar panels one through four, all run in parallel to these two cables. Now, we haven't fully wired up the other array yet, so we're going to do that now. And then we'll be able to plug them into what I call the on the machine. <laughs> and then from there into, now this is the interesting part, two coming in from this side and that side, just like this. So another pair of these, they're going to go into the on the machine. <laughs> Two pairs are going to come out, but then they're going to split up back into um, four again each. So this will eventually have a splitter that will split them off into four. And I'm going to explain that a little bit later, but trust me, it works. Right now, we need to wire up these sides. So let's do that. Awesome. Let me show you how these MC4 connectors work. Okay. They have two pieces. There's a, a male here and a female here. Okay. Now these are the connectors. Each connector also has pins, a male pin and a female pin. Even though gender is not binary. This is true. Just how it is. Just to, to tell you this. <laughs> Here's the interesting thing though. The male connector goes into the female connector like that. However, it uses the female pin. The male, male got connector. It. The male connector uses female pin. Got it. And the female connector uses, uses the, male, the pin. male pin. So we have three female connectors. We need one of them at least to put it to, to do the final connection here. Mm -hmm. And we only have one male connector, so we gotta save that for connecting. So that goes over there. Why don't I do the male connector first? Because I can do that and we'll get that done. Okay. You watch me, because the basic principles are exist 
exactly the same for both. Okay. And then you can practice a female on one of the spare ones, and then you can do the real one. How about that? Okay. Then you get two chances. All right. I am going to do, this is the female plug and the male connector. So the female plug is going onto the black. Okay. This is always positive. The male plug is always positive, and I use the red for that. Okay. And this is always negative, so the female for that. First thing we need to do is to strip our wire. Okay, show me how that works. This is a an, a, an automatic wire stripper. What it does okay. is it grips the wire like that, okay. and it slices it here, and then pulls, it pulls it, apart. it apart. Now it's a little bit harder with these solar cable wires because they're a little bit thicker and more difficult. So I'm going to need this for uh, here, but I'll show you how it works. I've got it set up so you just bump it up against there. You see? Okay, yep. And okay. we pull it. Now you see it's a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. So then I just kind of give it a little bit of a cut. Then I can come back in here. Excellent. There we go. Beautiful. It's not, twist them. it's not the prettiest thing, but it'll do the job. Make sure we're okay. doing the female, so I got a ma double check male connector. So, can you take that apart? I have to put these on before I do anything else. Oh, okay. Now I can do my connections. I just let that fall down. I'll get that later. Now, this is a tricky part here. The crimper, you have to use the last one for this. Now, you see these two little things sticking out here? Yeah. That goes, that's what's going to be squeezed, but I like to put it right there. You see okay. that? So, in the basically, what is the female part of the crimper? And you just squeeze it and. I uh oh, what happened? I pulled it as I was crimping and I wound up pulling it out. So, uh. so you see, don't do that. <laughs> now it's our only male. That was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Got it in my grip, and instead of just squeezing, yeah. I also pulled. squeezed and pulled a little bit. Yeah, there's no way to pull those apart. No, that's, that's done. done. You can't uncrimp a crimped connection, but you can still do the females. And uh, does that mean we can't hook anything up today? No, we can hook up one. We can't hook up both. Okay, so let so, me talk through and you tell me when okay. I'm wrong. So I take this and I bump it up against here yeah. and I do, go as hard as I can. It's automatic. Oh, look. Yeah. And then twirly twirly. So I take this off and I thread it in. All right, so that's in there. And then I take one of the female, what are these called again? Pins. And then I, I insert there. Is that right? And just Squeeze away. There you go. Look at that. Did better than I did. Now, this is a little trick I didn't get to show you. Okay. When you're putting it in, there will sometimes be an audible click or just a feel of a little click. Let me click. feel There. Good okay. job. These wrenches are specifically made to do this. Mm. This slides on here and it's like that. Okay. This slides on here and it's like that. <laughs> Somebody's singing. I want to hear a clicky click. You know you're on. And there you go. Good job. Thanks, hon. That was beginner's luck. Now I'm going to screw it up. Here we go. For this so, one, we're going to use one of these because these actually fit. So the first thing I will do, I'm going to talk through it like Julia Proud. First thing I will do is second time. It doesn't want to do it. I'm going to try it one more time and then I'll do your trick. It was just nice to me the first time because I was a beginner. So right here, right? Yep. Or Okay. Yep. Right there. So I've scored this a bit, and now we're gonna try it again. Ah, oh, there we go. So now, I'm gonna take this in. Ooh, you see that? This one's a bit different. <laughs> I'll let those go have a little happy journey down there. A little Bob Ross moment. So now, I'm taking a female. What, what is this called again? That's a pin. So then, I'm gonna take the crimper. Sometimes, I will actually put a finger on top of it and help hold it in place. That's a good tip. Should squeeze very easily. It doesn't take a lot of force. Now, is it okay that these little wingies are out? Yeah, because that's different. See the crimp right there? Yeah, that's Perfect. the part. You're Perfect. Okay. All right. Those little things. That's what the, you hear the clicky thing. That's, that's what, what does that. Yeah. So now I'm putting the mail into this, and I hear. I, I felt it. That's I felt it. the click. That's all I need. And then I come back down here. Your fun is over. Yeah. I'm gonna take this and make sure that it's in there first. Cool. Turn the one in your left hand. Toward me. Yeah. Until it clicks. Perfect. That was a loud click. I know. Because <laughs> that's actually the wrench slipping on here, and then you know it's in. Good job, baby. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now what happens to this? Well, this one we can't do anything with because we don't have the, uh, the, the other one. side because <laughs> some, somebody screwed that up. <laughs> <laughs> so what we can do is we can, however, plug one of these towers into a solar panels one, two, three, and four. Using this. Using these. These are all ready to go. When I was up on the roof, I made sure each panel and each array were working. Now we're just going to double check it here. Cool. Put it on voltage uh, for DC volts. As soon as I plug it in here. There you go. Can you see that? What are we looking at, honey? DC? That is DC. 68.1 DC volts. Nice. So the max we can get is 72. This one array. Yeah. So that's pretty good. We know it works. So now we know it's working. We can plug it in. Okay. Uh, 
I'm very excited. This is, these are Y connectors. We have a couple of them up on the roof as well, uh, but we're going to use these right now. These are for the other tower, which we can't do because somebody didn't crimp properly. <laughs> we're going to plug this one in. There is an input here. Again, it's a proprietary input on this side, but on this side, they're both standard MC4 connectors. There are two sets here because, as I said, there are two charge controllers inside this box, both together capable of bringing in 2,400 watts of power uh, from solar, which is pretty darn good. So our whole system can bring in how much? 4,800. I'm going to be doing wire management, proper wire management later. And I might put this somewhere like up here. Because that is basically, if we want to turn all the power off to maybe work on a solar panel or something, we can just go to that switch and it's a very simple on off. Yeah, it will completely cut off the, uh, the solar panels from the towers because this one has uh, two inputs and two outputs. So one for each tower. Yeah, nice. We are going to use number one input here. There was a click that make sure that's off before I do anything else because because it's scary. Mm -hmm. This is number one input here. Number one output is down at the other side because they, they, they go diagonal. Before I do anything, there's a setting I've got to set. Let's see if I can remember how to do the settings. PV. I got to make sure that uh, the DC input source is on PV. Single phase, standard UPS, silent mode. Next. TV parallel enable. This is what we need because the two charge controllers can work together in parallel with each other, which is what we have it here. We do it this way because otherwise we'd have four cables coming in from the front, four cables coming in from the back. By doing it this way and using this setting, which I'm going to set right now, PV parallel enable on. That means that I only have these two cables coming in from our uh, solar panels one, two, three, and four, and then I can split those back into four cables to go into here. Now we're gonna try this. Now it's at 99%. We have zero watts coming in from the PV, and here goes. Are you ready? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> PV comes on, and here comes our watts. Oh, 469. Oh, that's very that's just coming in from half of our solar, yeah? Yeah, the other half will come in here. So we have, uh, what's, what's 390 times four? Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> it's also kind of overcast right now. Does it seem like it's less than it should be? A little bit. It's, it's starting to go down, but it's also at 99%, which means it's it might even be fully charged because that's at 99%, so it's, it's only pulling in enough to top it off. This one, however, is at 97%, so why don't we plug it into that one? This is the DC input port. This goes in here. Now you can also plug in uh, battery to battery, DC to DC charger. There is a setting in there for that. The isolator is turned off right now. Now watch this one right here. You ready? Yeah. It recognizes it. 330. What would you expect the number to be? Like at, at the most it could be four times 390. It would be 1560. So the sun popped out. Before I was looking at it, we were overcast. Didn't have a lot of sun. I'm new to this. We're new to this. I didn't know what to expect. I was worried that I had wired something up wrong. And it was just because it was a little bit overcast. The sun kind of peaked out a little bit. It shot up. I think we have a maximum rated amperage out of this one multi-array of about 1,500, 1,500 and change. We'll never get that because it just doesn't meet that maximum wattage unless it's super cold, bright, sunny day. But it shot up and right now we're at 1,100. 1100 watts. Going down a lot because there it goes. 1100. 11, 10, 97. But yeah, as the clouds move around and as the sun comes out. We got up to 1300 watts, which is pretty darn good for uh, the four panels. With a maximum rated capacity of about 1500, 1300 is pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, very pleased. Yay. So there we go. It's already up, it's uh, gone up one percentage. <laughs> it works. Yay. <laughs> We did pretty good today, didn't we? We're very excited. We have our solar generator, our solar generators. And to me, the most important thing is like, what does this do for us? What does this do for us? It makes it so we don't have to string our extension cord all the way over to the shed. We can take all of our power from our own system and that system is powered by the sun. Yeah. And the solar panels were working as expected. And this is just the first one. Talk about how there's gonna be like Double. I mean, yeah. <laughs> solar panels one, two, three, and four. They're now plugged into the driver's side power tower. Tower of power. Tower of power. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and uh, solar panels five, six, seven, and eight are going to be plugged into this tower. Uh, but we don't have the connections yet. Somebody messed up a crimp. <laughs> Not bad for a Sunday. Good job, baby. Good job. Love, Love you. you. Mm-hmm.